Hey there, everyone. It's last gasp effort for Terry Felton as we try to get him a win in his sixth and final start of the season. This game was played in Toronto Exhibition Stadium. And the game was played on September 28th. It's actually the second game of a doubleheader. And uh, we are going to get going here. Lineups for the Twins. Leading off will be Bobby Mitchell in center field. Ron Washington, the I believe he's the shortstop. Let's take a look here. Yep, Ron Washington's at second base. He will hit second. Tom Bernanski hits third in right field. Kent Herbeck at first base will back cleanup. Gary Ward's in left field. He will hit fifth. Gary Gaetti is the third baseman. He will hit sixth. Randy Johnson's the DH batting seventh. Tim Laudner, the catcher, hits eighth. And Lenny Fiedo, the shortstop, bats ninth. And on the mound for the Blue Jays is Jim Gott. All right, so Damaso Garcia will lead off for Toronto. Rance Mullenix hits second, playing third base. Willie Upshaw will be at first base, hitting third. Ernie Witt, that tells you how, kind of how weak their lineup is, with Ernie Witt as the cleanup hitter, batting, playing catcher. Barry Bunnell will bat fifth and play center field. Hoskin Powell is in left field. He will hit sixth. Jesse Barfield will bat seventh and play right field. Glenn Adams, the DH, will bat eighth, and Alfredo Griffin, the shortstop, will bat ninth. Now, one thing I did forget to do, I'm going to pause the video. I forgot to add in the ballpark effects for Exhibition Stadium, so let me go grab those, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, ballpark effects for 1982, Toronto's Exhibition Stadium. Singles are 1 to 11 for lefties and righties. Home runs, very generous. 1 to 16 for lefties, 1 to 19 for righties. Don't know if that will be a downfall for Terry Felton or not. We'll find out. Right now, the Twins are going to be batting first, and it's Bobby Mitchell, the center fielder. He'll lead off against Jim Gott. It's a 3 8. 3 8 against a right hander is a ground ball to second. And we are underway. Quickly one out for the second baseman, Ron Washington. That's a 2-7, and that's going to be a ground ball to short. All those hits in column two, and he found the one out, which is ground ball to short. But it is under the seven number, so that means it comes up, obviously, a little more often. So that's why it's strategically there and statistically accurate there. All right, Tom Bernanski, right fielder. It's a 6-6, so we're off got for the first time. It's a ground ball to third, handled over there by Rance Mullenix, and the Twins go down in order, 1-2-3 begin the first. So nothing doing for them. Now Terry Felton, the man of the hour, steps to the mound and he'll start out facing the leadoff man, Damaso Garcia, or Damaso Garcia, however you want to pronounce it. I think it was pronounced Damaso, but I could be wrong. 4-9, Felton against a righty. Ooh, 1-7's a triple. 8-20 to 20, though is just a meager fly out. And that's a 19, so good roll there on the 20 as the center fielder, Mitchell, flagged that one down. One away for Rance Mullenix, the third baseman. That's a 5-9 against a lefty, and that's going to be trouble for Felton. 1-13 to is a double. 14 or 20 to 20 is a single. That's a 14, so it will be a single. So at least it was not an extra base hit. One away for Willie Upshaw. Roll the D20, see if anything happens. Nothing. Upshaw, 5-4, and that's going to be a fly ball center field X. That's Bobby Mitchell. He's a 2-E3. That's a 4, so I think he'll get to that. Double check it. 2 and a 4 is an F1, so he did get to it. That is a total of 11, and he is an E3 center fielder. There is no 11 in the 3 category, so it's run down out there by the center fielder Mitchell. He's made two good plays out there already. And here's Ernie Witt, the catcher. Nothing on the 20. It's a 3-3 for Ernie Witt, and he's going to ground it back to Felton, and that's going to end the bottom of the first. So one inning is in the books, and there is no score. Twins need to get some runs if they want to get Terry Felton a win. They have to do it against Jim Gott. He put him down in order, one, two, three, to start the first. So we'll try it in the second. Kent Herbeck to lead things off. 
Herbeck a 1-2, and that's a line out to second base max. Nobody's on, so it's simply a line out, one away. Brings up Gary Ward, left fielder. 5-11, that's a ground. 5-11, it actually is a home run. I almost read 6-11. 5-11 is an in home run chance. Ballpark diamond shot. He does have normal power. And as we said, the home runs for Exhibition Stadium for a right-hander is 1-19. to So unless this is a 20, Gary Ward has gone deep. It's a 17, so he barely got it, but he did get it. It's all that counts. And Gary Ward has put the Twins on top, one to nothing, with a solo home run. So maybe that gives Terry Felton a little boost. Here's Gary Gaetti, 2-6. Ground ball to third, and that's two away. So Mullenix handles that, no problem. Brings up the DH, Randy Johnson. It's a 2-8, and that's a single for Randy Johnson, two-out single. Keeps things going for the catcher, Tim Laudner. Nothing on the 20. 4-8 against Gott. 1-8 to is a single. Anything else will be a ground ball to Mullenix. That's a 20, so Mullenix will field it. And that's the end of the inning. But the home run by Gary Ward has given the Twins a 1-0 lead. Now Terry Felton has something to try to protect as he's given a 1-0 lead. But he's been given leads in the past and hasn't held them, so... Long way to go. We're only in inning number two. Here's Barry Bunnell. 2-8 for Bunnell. He's going to ground it back to Felton. So two outs in a row have been ground balls to Felton. Brings up Hoskin Powell, the left fielder. 6-7. He's a lefty. 6-7 is a uh, ground ball to second. X. And that's going to be Washington. He's a 4-E21. That is a 2, so that's going to get through for a base hit. Four and a two is a single. There is a 14, and he's an E. He's an E21. There is no 14, so it's simply a single for Hoskin Powell. So one aboard for Jesse Barfield. Nothing on the 20. One five for Barfield. Ooh, that's damage done right here. One to three is a triple. Anything else is a single with two stars. That is a three. That is a three, so it's a triple for Barfield, and we are tied just like that. So Felton quickly unable to hold the lead, and now he's in danger of falling behind. The runner at third and one out. They're going to bring the infield in. It's Glenn Adams, the DH. There's a two, so it's a chance for either a pass ball or a wild pitch. I'm sorry, a pass ball or a balk. It's a three, so we're going to the balk rating of Felton, which is a five. One to five, he'll balk a run in. It's a four. you believe that? He balked a run in. Unbelievable. So he balks the run in. It's now two to one Blue Jays. So now the infield can go back to normal depth with the bases empty. Two nine. Ground ball first base A. That would have held the runner had they not balked in the run. But he did. So two down. Bases empty for Alfredo Griffin. Switch hitting shortstop. Five nine. In home run chance, but he has a weak power, so 1 to 8 would be a single, 9 to 20 would be a double. It's a 10, so it's a double for Alfredo Griffin. So Griffin, two out double. Now we're back to the top of the order, and Damaso Garcia. There's a 2, so we got another chance for either a balk or a pass ball. This time we're looking at pass ball ratings. Laudner, his pass ball rating. Wrote his T rating down, didn't write his pass ball rating down. So Laudner, he's a pass ball zero. That's why I didn't write it down. Okay, that makes sense. So no possibility of a pass ball. 5-7. Five, 5-7 seven. Five, seven is a strikeout against the right-handed hitting Garcia. Innings over, but two runs for Toronto. One of them really hurts with that balk. But that's the way it goes. Felton lost a little focus there, I guess. So we go to the third. It is two to one Toronto. Oops, come on Jim Gott, get up there. Two to one Toronto and Lenny Fiedo, the shortstop, will lead things off. Two seven for Fiedo and he's gonna fly to left. One away, back to the top of the order for Bobby Mitchell. One four, that's a ballpark single check and the singles at Toronto 
for both lefties and righties are a 1 to 11. So a 1 to 11. And Fajardo, will, I'm sorry, Mitchell will sneak one through. And he does. It's a 3. So ballpark single for Bobby Mitchell. Brings up Ron Washington. Nothing on the 20. 410. 410. Another ballpark single check right here. So it's another 1 to 11. And it's a 9, so it is a single. One star. So runners at first and second with one out for Tom Brunanski. Whoa, nothing on the 20. It's a 4 7, and that's a walk. That's going to load the bases. So the bases are now loaded with one out for Herbeck. So you got Herbeck and Ward, the power guys, coming up with the bases loaded and one out. Nothing on the 20. Herbeck, 4-4, four, four, lefty. Ground ball, third base, X. That is Mullenix. He's a 4-E25. It's a 13, so I think you'll get to that. Let's check it out. 4 and a 13 is a G3, so the runners are going to advance. That will score a run, if nothing else. It's a 17, and he is an E25, a 28. E28, there is no 17, but it will be a like a ground ball C, so that's going to score the run. Herbeck is out five to three, but coming in scores Mitchell, and we got a tie ball game at two apiece, and everybody else advances. Runners at second and third, two outs for Gary Ward, who homered his last time up. Nothing on the twenty. Ooh, six eleven, and that's a ground ball to short. That's going to end the inning. But the run for the Twins, thanks to the RBI ground out. Go to the bottom of the third, and it's two to two. Felton back out there, maybe get a little bit of momentum with that run scoring. Here's Rance Mullenix. Four seven is a walk, so that's not how you want to start things out. Those leadoff walks can come back to bite you. Here's Willie Upshaw. Nothing on the twenty. Upshaw a four ten against the lefty. That's a strikeout, so Felton reached back for a little extra. Picked up the K. Here's Ernie Witt. Nothing on the 20. That is a 2-8 for Ernie Witt. And that's a pop out to first. He had a whole bunch of hits in column two, but they found the pop out to first. Two down for Barry Bunnell. Barry Bunnell. Nothing on the 20. That was a 17. It's a 5-5 five, five against Felton, and that is a strikeout. So Felton... Gets past that leadoff walk with no damage done. We played three complete here at Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, and we're tied at two. And now Jim Gott coming back out. Start the fourth. He'll be facing Gary Gaietti. Gaietti grounded to third his first trip. One four. He's got a chance for a single, but it's not a good one. One to five. Otherwise, he'll line it to Mullenix at third. That is a three, so he did get the base hit. So, Gaetti beat the odds, got the base hit. Here's Randy Johnson. Nothing on the 20. 311 for Johnson is a ground ball second base C, so the runner will advance. At least it's not a double play. So, Gaetti goes to second with one out for Tim Laudner, catcher. Nothing on the 20. 5 6 against a righty, forgot. 5 6 is a ground ball shortstop A, so with the play in front of him, he will have to hold at second base. So there's two down for Lenny Fiedo, shortstop. Nothing on the 20. Oh, we have to re-roll that. That got in the crack here. 3-5. Three, 3-5 five. Three, five is a ground ball to second, and that's going to end the inning. Nothing doing there. So we go to the bottom of the fourth. Score still tied at two. And coming up for the Blue Jays will be Hoskin Powell. And he'll be followed by Barfield and Adams, numbers 6, 7, and 8 in the Blue Jay lineup. Powell singled and scored his first trip. It's a 6-3. Six, 6-3 three. Six, three against the lefties, a fly ball right field X. That is Brunanski. He's a 3 E7. 3 and a 20, you'll get to it in an 11. So we'll check the error. Make sure there's no error on an E7 with a number 11. E7, there is no 11, so it's a good play. And Hoskin Powell is retired. Here's Jesse Barfield. Three, 
three six for it's a ground ball to short that's two away so two up two down that'll bring up glenn adams i guess when you go to a get together at his house you go to join the adams family it's six 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 is a fly to center and that's going to end the inning so after four complete we are still tied at two apiece and I'm going to take a quick stretch break and be right back for the fifth. Okay, top of the fifth, it'll be Bobby Mitchell to lead it off, top of the order against Gott. And actually, this is Gott's point of weakness inning. He has a five there, so we'll keep track of that. Five, three against a lefty. Fly ball left field X. That is Hoskin Powell. He's a four E9. That's a seven. Probably we'll get to that. Maybe not, though. Four and a seven is an SI2, so that's a single. And that's a 10, so we know there's no errors on 10s. I don't believe. Well, there are, but they're way down. You have to be really high error rating. So that is a single for Mitchell to lead things off. So he snuck it in the gap there before Mr. Powell could get to it. Here's Ron Washington. That's a 4-6. He's a righty. 4-6 is a walk. So that's two notches against Gott's point of weakness. And now the Toronto bullpen is loose, getting loose down there. Here's Brunanski. Nothing on the 20. Brunanski, a 5-7 against a right-hander is a strikeout. There's a dot there, but he has not reached the point of weakness yet. So that strikeout will hold. A big one for Gott, and here's Kent Herbeck. This is the part of the order for the Twins to do some damage. 2-3 for Herbeck. 2-3 is a ballpark single check, and that again is 1 to an 11. It'll be a single. It's a 2, so it is a single, but only one star, so runners will have to hold the runner Mitchell will have to hold at third and Washington will have to hold at second so the bases are loaded with one out and now God has reached this point of weakness so let's see they're gonna go and give him one more chance to try to get out of this with Gary Ward nothing on the 20 a 2-5 and a 2-5 is a 1-4 to four single but anything else is a line out to third that would keep the runners right where they are and it is. It's a line out to Mullenix for out number two. So now it's up to Gary Gaetti, And the Twins are letting a golden opportunity slip away. Gaetti, nothing on the 20. It's a 2-9 for Gaetti, And he strikes out. So, boy, talking about leaving runs on the table, on the bases. He did it. Or they did it. And the Twins had the bases loaded with one out and could not score. Go to the bottom of the fifth. Still 2-2. Two to two. Felton a little bit dejected, I'm sure. And that's probably going to be all for Gott. I'm sure they're going to the bullpen for the sixth and further. So they're going to... Uh, Toronto's going to have Joey McLaughlin come in to pitch the sixth. So that's going to be it for Gott. So they couldn't get Gott that time. Gott got them. Oh, I'm going to roll the D24. It's a leadoff batter. All right, here's Griffin. 6-3, switch hitter batting left. Fly ball right field X. That is Bernanski. He's a 3-E7. 16, he'll get to it. That's a 5. That's a rare play, so this could be interesting. The 16 and the 3 produces an F2, so we'll check F2 rare play. The outfielder catches the fly ball for an out. If there's a runner on third base, he tags up and scores a run. The play is appealed by the defense, and the umpire rules that the runner left too early. He is out on the appeal play. Well, there's nobody on base, so it's simply a fly out. But that could have been interesting. That could have been a, what you thought was a sack fly that got took, taken away. But with base is empty, it was really nothing to it. Here's Garcia, top of the order, 5-10. Catcher X. Catcher X, and that's Laudner. He's a 4-E7. It's a 17, so that should not be a problem. 4 Let's see, he's a 17 and he's a 4, so that's a pop-out. And then that's a 4 there, and he is an E7. And there is no 4, so it's a good, good play by Laudner. It's a simple pop-out. Two down. Brings up Rance Mullenix. 
This is Felton's point of weakness in also, I forgot to mention that. 1-7 is a fly to center, but he did not have any marks against him. He went 1-2-3, so he's still good to go for some more innings. And he's going to need to to get a win if he wants to get a win, because right now he's at a no decision. So we start the 6th, tied at 2, and Joey McLaughlin, the right-hander. McLaughlin will come on for the Jays, right-hander. He'll be on to face Randy Johnson, Tim Laudner, and Lenny Fiedo. So one lefty and two righties. It is a 6-10 for McLaughlin against a lefty. Ground ball third base X, that's Mullinix. 4-E-25, that's a 13, so he'll get in front of it. And let's check the error rating. He got an 8, and he is an E-25, a 28, rather. E-28 and an 8, there is no 8, so it's a good play. For Mullinix, one away for Tim Laudner. 6-8. Six, 6-8 eight. Six, eight is a fly to center. That's two away. Brings up the shortstop, Lenny Fiedo. 5-6 for uh, off of McLaughlin is a 1-12 to double. 3 to th I'm sorry, 13 to 20 is a fly out. That's a 1, so it's a double for Lenny Fiedo. A two-out double. And now that brings up Bobby Mitchell. Mitchell singled his last time up. He's actually two for three with two singles. Oh, got to roll the 20. My bad. It's two, so it's a chance for pass ball or balk. Now, McLaughlin has a zero balk rating. And Witt, Witt may have a zero. I think he's got a zero pass ball rating. So I think this is going to be a moot point. Double check it here. No, he's got a pass ball rating of two. So if this is a one or a two, it's a pass ball. And it is, it's a two, it's a pass ball. Go figure. All right, so pass ball is going to move the runner to third. So Fiedo is there at third. Nothing this time on the 20. That's a leaner, so we're going to re-roll that. Five, six against a lefty. One to two is a double. Anything else, he'll fly to center. That's a nine, so it's a fly to center, and the inning is over. So nothing doing there. As the Twins still can't get more runs for Terry Felton. So he's going to come back out there. He has zero marks against this point of weakness so far. He'll be facing Willie Upshaw to start the bottom of the sixth. It's a 3-7 for Upshaw. That's a fly to center. One away. Brings up Ernie Witt. 6-12 against a lefty. And that's a 1-2 single. Anything else, he's going to line it to Herbeck. And that's a line out to Herbeck for out number two. So still no marks against this point of weakness. It's Barry Bunnell. Barry Bunnell. Maybe he's getting meaner like I was talking about last game. Talking about Felton. 5-7 is a strikeout. That's going to end the inning. So he's gone two innings and has not reached anything on his point of weakness. We played six. And nothing's been decided. It's two to two. And McLaughlin will come back out for his second inning of work. Be facing Ron Washington. It is a one six. Ground ball to third. One away. And that'll bring up Brunanski. One two for Brunanski is a ground ball to first. Two down. Here's Herbeck. This is the part of the order the Twins need to get going. 3-2 is a walk, so that's a, a two-out walk to Herbeck. Brings up Gary Ward, and he did homer back in the second inning, his first at bat. Nothing on the 20. It's a 6-6, six, six, and a 6-6. Six, six, a 1-5 to five is a single. Anything else will be a liner to Mullinix at third. And that's a 1, so it will be a single. Off the clipboard, and down she goes. It is a single. So it keeps the inning alive for Mr. Gaietti. So two on, two out. Here's Gaietti. Nothing on the 20. 5-2. Pop out to second, and that's going to end the top of the seventh. So seventh inning stretch time. Still 2-2. Two to two. It's probably going to be all from McLaughlin. Two innings is usually his max. 
So we'll go to the bottom of the seventh. Hoskin Powell will start things off against Felton. And for the Blue Jays in their bullpen, they will turn to see who they're going to go to here. Murray's their closer, so they don't want to really go to him. Looks like they're going to go to Dave Geisel, a lefty. So Dave Geisel, the lefty, will be coming in for Toronto in the eighth. Just as a heads up. And still in the bottom of the seventh, it is Felton against Hoskin Powell. 3-8. 3-8 is a solid single for Powell. That's the first knock on the point of weakness. Barfield will come up. Felton needs a double play ball. Nothing on the 20. 1-8. One 1-8 eight. One eight is a 1-2 to two single. Anything else is a fielder's choice to third. And that's what it is. It's a 5-4 fielder's choice. One away. And that brings up Glenn Adams, the DH. Lefty. 5-4. Five 5-4 four. Five four is a ground ball third base X. That'll be Gaetti. He's a 3-E18. And that's a 12. I don't think that's going to be a double play. Probably a fielder's choice. 3 and a 12 is a G2, which is a fielder's choice. That is a 12. He is an E18. 18. 18. There is no 12, so it's another fielder's choice to third. Back to back 5 to 4 fielder's choices. Two outs and now Fredo Griffin, the batter. Nothing on the 20. Griffin, a 4-2. Is a fly ball to right, and that's because cool, it's Griffin's a switch here to batting left. Fly ball to right is going to end the inning. And seven innings in the book. Felton's still going strong. He's only given up one hit since the point of weakness, so he's still good to go. We go to the eighth, and the new pitcher will be Dave Geisel for Toronto. Scheduled hitter is the DH Randy Johnson, the lefty, but he, as you can see on his card, does not hit lefties very well. So he's coming out of there. And they're going to bring in a right-handed bat in the form of Mickey Hatcher. So Mickey Hatcher will take over as the DH as well. So Hatcher pinch hitting and taking over as the DH. Start the eighth against Geisel. Righty on lefty. 2-7 for Hatcher against a lefty is a ground ball to short. One away. Brings up Tim Laudner. 4-3 against a right-hander is a fly ball right field X. That is Barfield. He's a 3-13. E That's a 13, so he'll get to that. So now we got an E13 and an 11. E13, and there is no 11, so good play. Two down for Fiedo. It's looking more and more like Felton's not going to get the run support. He needs to get a win. 6-8 is a fly to center, and that's going to end the inning. So we go to the bottom of the eighth, still tied at two. And you know you're going to have to keep Felton in there. I mean, you just can't take him out. It's his last chance. So if he takes a loss, he takes a loss. But you can't take him out when he has not reached a point of weakness yet. Here is Garcia. That's a 2-11. 2-11 for Garcia is a ballpark single check, which is 1-2-11. And, and that's a 14, so he's got a line to short. Snagged by Fiedo. One away for Rance Mullenix, third baseman. One for two with a walk, 5-6. And that's a strikeout. There is a dot there, but he has not reached the point of weakness, so he's still good to go to get that strikeout. Two down. He's only given up one hit since reaching the point of weakness innings. So he's still good to go. 4-6 is a walk, so that's another notch against that point of weakness. As there's a two-out walk to Upshaw. Brings up Ernie Witt. And this may be his last inning, so the Twins really need to do something in the ninth. 3-10 for Ernie Witt. He's going to ground to third, and that's going to end the inning. So we go to the ninth. Tied at two. And now the Blue Jays. Geisel will st stay in there. He went one, two, three in the eighth, so no sense taking him out. You might as well leave him in there. He's going to be facing Bobby Mitchell. And the Twins have to get a run here in the ninth if Felton's going to get a win or a chance for a win. 
Five seven lefty on lefty. Five seven is a ground ball. Second base X. Garcia is a one, so we know he's going to get to it. It's a matter of whether he makes an error or not. That is an eleven. He's an E eighteen. So an E eighteen, and that's an eleven. So an E eighteen. There is no eleven. So Garcia makes the play. One away for Ron Washington. It's a 2-4 against the lefty Geisel, and that's a strikeout. So Ron Washington out on strikes. Here's Bernanski. Maybe he can go deep or something. I don't know. 5-8 against Geisel against the right hand. There's a pop out to third, and that's going to do it for the Twins. Nothing doing. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Still tied at two. And yes, we're going to leave Felton in there. Might be a mistake, but the last chance of his project to get him a win, so we're going to go for everything we can. Here's Bunnell. It's a 3-7 for Bunnell. He's going to fly to center. One away. But this is going to be the last inning for Felton. There's no way we're going 10 innings with him. So Hoskin Powell, 3-6. is a 1-10 single. That's a 12, though, so that's going to be a line out to second for out number two. So here's Barfield, so he's got to make sure Barfield doesn't take him deep. 110 is a ball, not a ballpark single, it's a clutch single, but we're not in a clutch situation, so single will stand. Two out single by Barfield. Brings up Glenn Adams. And that's a two on the D20. I know you couldn't see it, it rolled away there, but it is a two, so we'll check this. It's a balk chance. Felton has already balked once. 12, so he does not balk this time. Here's Adams. 2 5, ground ball to first. That's going to end the inning. So by all rights, Felton should have got a win here. He pitched nine innings and only gave up two runs. But his team could not get him the run support. So we go to the 10th. But if they do score here in the top of the 10th, then he would get credited with the win, potentially. Uh, Dale Murray is going to come in for the, tw for the Blue Jays as Geisel has gone two innings already. So Dale Murray is the fourth pitcher for the Blue Jays. And Ron Davis is loosening in the Twins bullpen. So it'll be Murray, and he'll be facing Herbeck, Ward, and Gaetti. So the heart of the order. 6-4 against the lefty is a ground ball to first. So one away. That'll bring up Gary Ward. 6-9 for Gary Ward against a right-hander is a strikeout. So it's not looking good, fans. Unless Gaetti can go deep. 4-7 is a strikeout. So that's going to take care of that. And nothing doing in the top of the 10th. We go to the bottom of the 10th, and that's going to sadly do it for Felton. He went nine innings and gave up two runs. Can't ask any more than that. That would be very unrealistic. I probably was already pushing it as it was, but trying to get him that win, and it just did not work out for him. All right, here's Alfredo Griffin. He's going to lead off against Ron Davis. We got a 111. 111 is a 1 to 10 single. Anything else will be a line out to second, and that is a single for Alfredo Griffin. So, number nine hitter gets that base hit. And now that'll bring up Damaso Garcia. He is a B bunter, so they're going to look to bunt here. It'll be a C bunter because they're expecting it. That's an eight with a two on the white guy. So, an eight. C bunter and an eight is a sacrifice, and the white die being a two means it's to the pitcher. So it's a sacrifice to Ron Davis. We will call it one to four as he tosses to Ron Washington covering. Griffin goes to second, so he's in scoring position. Try to win the game. Rance Mullinix and Upshaw, two lefties, have a chance. Nothing on the 20. That's a three, four. Ground ball first base B, so that's going to move the runner up to third, but now there are two outs, and it's up to Willie Upshaw. Now they could walk Upshaw because they do have a base open and pitch to Ernie Witt. Upshaw was a 267 hitter, Witt was 261, so tit for tat. They'll go ahead and pitch to Upshaw. Nothing on the 20. 4-9 against Ron Davis is a fly to left, and that's going to end the inning. 
So nothing doing there. My score sheet is done. On this score sheet you print out, it only goes 10 innings, so I'll have to keep score on the back, I guess, to finish this game out. Although really it's irrelevant, I guess, at this point to finish it out since there's no chance of a victory for Terry Felton. But for poster pos posterity's sake, we will finish it out. So I'm going to flip this over. Well, I can't flip it over because it's two-sided, so I'll have to keep score somewhere else, maybe in my head. We'll see. But Mickey Hatcher facing Murray for his second inning of work. 4-9. 4-9 is a ground ball shortstop X. That is Alfredo Griffin. 2-E27. Two, 2 and a 5. I think he'll get to that. 2 and a 5. Yes, he does. That's a 9, and he is an E27 as a shortstop. E27 as a shortstop. There is no 9, so it's good play. 6-3. So I'll just put this... I'll mark this as the 11th and just go down here. All right, so that brings up Tim Laudner. 5-6 against a right-hander. Struck him out. Two down for Lenny Fiedo. 5-6, another strikeout. So that's going to do it here in the 11th, top of the 11th. We go to the bottom of the 11th. Ron Davis in for his second inning of work. And he'll be facing Witt. Bunnell and Hoskin Powell. So Witt, the batter. That is a 6-6 six, six against a lefty. And that's going to be a 1-16 to 16 triple. 17-20 to 20 is a double. So this might be the beginning of the end for the Twins. That's a 1. So that is an Ernie Witt triple, if you can believe that. So somehow he was managing to get a triple out of that. Now the infield, of course, will come in. Barry Bunnell, batter. With the infield in. There's a two there, so it's a chance for a balk or a pass ball. It's a four, so we're checking the pass ball rating. Laudner is a two. There is no pass ball. so Actually, Laudner was a zero, my bad. So it's a four-seven. Four-seven is a walk, so Ron Davis walks him. Puts runners at first and third with still nobody out. Infield still in. Hoskin Powell. Nothing on the 20. It's a 210 for Hoskin Powell. And that's a solid base hit either way. Single or a double, it doesn't really matter. It's a single, and that's the ball game as Toronto walks it off. Scoring his wit, and the ball game is over. Hoskin Powell delivers the RBI single. And that's going to do it. A 3-2 to two victory for Toronto. And for Mr. Felton, it's what could have been with some run support. Didn't happen. So we've done all six starts, and he could not get the win, just as in real life he could not get the win. So that wraps up this mini project for Terry Felton. I was hoping to get him a win, but it just wasn't in the dice. So that's going to do it from here. Hope everybody has a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. And I will see you all down the road.